in this video we would have a look at how you can use chat uh, GPT to work with your SAP integration. Um, the, the interface looks the same, you can write a command or prompt to it and then it will start typing out uh, answers to the given problem. So like here, how do you map a PI object and convert it to JSON. Here it comes up with an XML on how you can put in this code and run it. Last time I ran it, it created also a guide to use NetWeaver uh, to set it up and convert it and then it got a timeout uh, class. And now it is obviously not always delivering the same result. So here it seems like it is using some other process and this is uh, not really ideal way to do it. Uh, I'm not sure why it gets into this uh, customer property here. So this is definitely not it. And I think this is a lot to say about what the tool can do. It can deliver the right result, but it is not really guaranteed. I did also have it and went through a number of different scenarios here. Uh, one was how to make a groovy script with a purchase order and it is able to create all of these artifacts, define them um, and create some actually pretty useful code that you can see. You can uh, check out this link in, in the description here or I'll uh, link to this blog post. Um, and based on the comments, it is able to per perform all the calculations, sums, and add all of these quantities uh, to it. So it is pretty cool that you can get a lot of this code. And I think the, the point is, from a developer perspective, these can be pretty challenging to figure out. You would go to uh, <laughs> whatever uh, site that you have or Google and search for some of these things and then you can find it. Here you can find it with a lot more context. In some cases, it is not always the case that it works correctly. Um, here it also adds a more groovy script parsing to make it work and we can obviously see we can take all of the code put it in and run it in a cpi world <clears throat> you need obviously to be sure you're doing the right thing before you uh, start enhancing on this and it is giving different results how many times you're running it um so it is still learning, it is making things differently. Uh, so if you do not like the result, you just press uh, retry again and then you may get something different. Um, but I do like that you can use it and um, yeah, it handles all of these uh, scenarios. So now we're just, just going into some standard uh, parser, which is Obviously, also interesting that it um, goes and, and try all of these uh, extra artifacts out, and then obviously you need to to go with these. And now it has forgotten everything about that we are in a PI context, just that we need to take a document and build it. So it does add some value to the way you're developing. But you definitely need to be careful about not just copying anything that it creates and, and convert it. Um, it also has for XSLT some, some good options to create that. Um, but also some pretty bad ones which will not really give a useful result. Um, you can also get more broad questions on it. Um, and here we can obviously see that it is coming up with a lot of generic terms that f just fill out with a lot of goof, uh, which is obviously cool. Uh, and it knows the, the platform. Uh, I think it said it was updated in 2021, so it did not have the new name of this and did not know AKA or something like this. Um, there is obviously parts that it does not know. So if you ask it to create a iFlow with a content converter, it just say click on CPI cockpit and create a new iFlow. So nothing about find the correct package uh, and create that. I guess it is okay here with the creating this make a content modifier 
and then select the desired format. This seems a bit out of place and a little challenging to, to actually get to work. Uh, drag a transport uh, response transformer in. Uh, drag an FTP center in. It, it is obviously a little more challenging to get it to create complete guides of all of these different things and yeah but I think the thing that I really like about it is that it does give you in some cases a lot of the, the pre-built steps that you need to understand uh, how to use when you're developing integration and with this you get it for free essentially which means that it becomes a lot easier for you to manage your integration you don't need to to figure out all of these different instances yourself i hope you find this interesting obviously you can find the link to the to my blog post about this but obviously you can also just go to uh, uh, OpenAI and uh, try it out and see how it goes so obviously they're trying to scale it up um, and there is some problems with it but it is an interesting way to consider and using to help you with some of the different scenarios um as an integration developer it is not going to take over your your life from day one but at least it is going to to help you with a lot of all the questions that you normally run into that you do not spend as much time on uh, normally i hope this has been helpful if you liked it please hit the like hit the subscribe button and i look forward to share more content with you thank you